And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you follow the safety regulations that your employers provide you. I'm Kevin Biniazin. Welcome to Legal Lunch Break. This is a show that serves up tasty bites from the world of law. Today, we take a look at HBO's mega hit Chernobyl. The miniseries tells a story of one of the worst nuclear reactor meltdowns in history. And today, we're going to do our best to explain who has legal responsibility and what it would mean in the United States if it were to happen today. Let's look at some scenes. Rules. Don't talk to me about rules. If we fall from 80%. No, no, we fell from 50% of from power. 50%. The rules don't say 50. There is no rule. Comrade Diadlov, I apologize, but what you're saying makes no sense. Raise the power. No. So if we were building this case in the real world, what we'd be doing is we'd be getting experts or we'd hire experts in the field to explain what somebody should do in this situation. And it sounds like they're trying to tell him shut this thing down, but he's still denying it and refusing it. Raise the power. I would like you to record your command. Raise the power. No, it's just being an ass. If it ever comes back in a legal, civil setting, what we're always looking for are document tra trails or uh, messages of authority to see who actually made the decision. So just like he's doing here to get a recording of his command, get some emails, send some emails, document it so that you can cover yourself. The hidden message throughout the whole show was the state responsible. No one in the room that night knew the shutdown button could act as a detonator. They didn't know it because it was kept from them. Professor Legasov, if you mean to suggest the Soviet state is somehow responsible for what happened, then I must warn you, you are treading on dangerous ground. The worst part is that they withheld that information from their engineers. Even the three plant managers that they're putting on trial, they provided them documents that were redacted that didn't tell them the danger of this graphite-tipped boron rod. And the result of that was when they're making the decision, the life or death decision that they made on April 25th and 26th of 1986, they didn't have the information available to themselves to make sure that they acted safely. And those are the situations where you have a company or an organization just as responsible, if not more responsible, for the harms that are caused to people than the actual employees and the servants that are actually doing the work for them. Because sometimes the institutional knowledge is really what hurts people, not just the people with their boots on the ground. It's easy to watch the miniseries and judge the Soviet Union. But the same thing happens here. The one topic that goes overlooked is what we call sovereign immunity. The Federal Tort Claims Act only allows you to sue for the wrongs of employees of the government. Well, what we're looking at in the Chernobyl series are employees, the plant managers that did something wrong, but also the bigger, more egregious decision of the government to withhold information and not provide what is needed to these managers in order to make the safety decision that's required of them. If we're in the United States with the Federal Tort Claims Act and you're trying to seek some sort of remedy from the federal government, whether it's a car crash, nuclear disaster, or a terrible incident like Chernobyl. What you have is the opportunity to be successful against the employees, but you're still not gonna be able to bring a lawsuit for the discretionary governmental decisions of the government themselves. And that is something that I personally think should change. Nobody's above the law and our courtroom should be open to find out the truth. Thanks for spending your lunch break with me today. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. But if you did, give me a thumbs up, send some comments, comment and let me know what you may want me to talk about the next lunch break. And I can't wait to see you then.